The 111th running of the Tour de France is in the books, and boy were we treated to a good one. Doors were busted open, records were made, and legends were established. Today, we're gonna take a look at the bikes that they did it on. And just in case it's not apparent by the title of this video, there will be some spoilers here. So if you need to catch up on your Tour de France highlights before watching, go ahead and do so. Also, if you think I miss any important components or specs or information about these guys' bikes, then you can go ahead and leave those down there in the comments. Now though, I can't think of a better place to start than with the Manx missile himself, Mark Cavendish. Cavendish is actually the only rider in this video who is not a winner of one of the Tour's four jerseys. So why start our video of winning bikes with him? Because in the fifth stage of the Tour, Cavendish broke Eddie Merck's long-standing record for most stage wins in the history of the Tour de France. In anticipation of this, Villiers made him a one-of-a-kind Philante SLR, complete with a custom paint job, celebrating his successful career in the yellow, green, and world champs jersey. The Philante is Villiers' aero bike, which means it's no surprise that Cavendish chose this for his win on that fifth stage. These bikes sacrifice a bit of weight and handling for increased aerodynamics, which is critical for flat, high-speed stages. His size small bike is equipped with Vision Metron components, including a 385mm Vision Metron 5D ACR Evo bar stem combo with 60 SL wheels. These are wrapped in a pair of 29mm Vittoria Corsa Pro tires. Shimano's Dura-Ace DI2 takes care of the group set, with 55 and 40 tooth chain rings up front and an 11 to 34 tooth cassette in the rear. Interestingly, that larger chainring up front is actually from Shimano's 11-speed group set, as they currently don't make a 55-tooth 12-speed variant. And we did see Cavendish run into a few mechanical issues over the course of the tour, most notably when he dropped his chain crossing the line on his Stage 5 victory. And I can't help but wonder if this could have been the culprit. One last interesting touch on Mark's bike is his continued use of aero bottles, which are typically reserved for time trial bikes. But hey, maybe that's what gave him his edge. So aspiring sprinters out there, take note. As for the weight, this one-of-a-kind Philante SLR tipped the scales at 7.65 kilograms or 16.86 pounds, the heaviest of any bike on our list. Moving on then to the jersey winners. And up first is the green jersey, often called the sprinter's jersey, which is awarded to the winner of the points classification. Three weeks ago, I don't think anyone would have guessed that this would have gone to Biniam Germain, who is now the first black rider to win not just one, but three stages of the Tour de France. Honestly, I think this is one of the coolest stories to come out of this year's tour, and I could do a whole video on that alone, but today we're here to talk about the bikes. And the bike that Biniam did it on is his 56 centimeter Cube Lightning Aero C68X. Like Cavendish's bike, the Aero in this bike's name denotes that it has been specifically optimized for performance on high-speed sprint stages, whereas Cube's Lightning Air C68 is the lighter, climbing-specific model used by the Intermarché team. In my opinion, this is definitely the most exotic-looking frame set of the bikes in today's video, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. You can put those down in the comments. The bike rolls on a pair of Newman Stream wheels, with a 60mm profile up front and 66mm in the back. Deep profile wheels like this aid in aerodynamics, but can get a bit hairy during crosswinds, which is why Germay and several other riders on this list opt for a shallower front wheel to keep handling sharp while eking out all the aero advantages they can in the back. Speaking of aerodynamics, the Intermarché bikes get some sneaky little invisible valve stems that are actually hidden inside the rim, requiring a special tool to access them. Rounding out Gamai's part spec is a 12-speed Shimano Dura-Ace DI2 group set with a massive 56 and 44 tooth chainring up front. Sadly, that's about all I can tell you on Gamai's bike. I wasn't even able to find a claimed weight, and that's probably because he didn't exactly have the most media attention before the tour started. But I think it's safe to say that that's not going to be the case next year. Transitioning now to a rider who got a whole lot of press attention before the tour started, and that is, of course, the current time trial world champ, Remco Evenepoel. This was his first ever Tour de France appearance, and he was awarded the white jersey, the winner of the young rider classification. This was done aboard a 52-centimeter specialized S-Works Tarmac SL8, and I have to say, I think it takes my vote for the best-looking bike at this year's race. Unlike the other two teams we've mentioned so far, the Quick Step Riders use the same bike for every stage except for the time trials. And this one-size-fits-all approach is getting increasingly common at the Tour. So while on the surface it may seem like a compromise, the engineering that goes into these is so good that bikes like the Tarmac SL8 manage to be just about as light and aerodynamic as the stage-specific bikes they replace. 
Remco's bike is specced with top tier components from specialized in-house brand Roval, including a very narrow set of 360 millimeter Roval Rapide bars and the CLX2 wheels. Despite being one of the youngest riders in the tour, Evenepoel definitely has some nostalgic taste, specifically when we talk about his tires. He opted for a pair of specialized turbo cotton clincher tires as opposed to a tubeless variant. Not only that, but he ran 26 millimeter tires on most stages, some of the narrowest you'll find in the modern Peloton. Like many others on today's list, Evenepoel's bike is specced with Shimano's 12-speed Dura-Ace Di2 group set with a 54 and 40 tooth chain rings up front and short 165 millimeter cranks. At the back of the bike is a direct mount rear derailleur hanger, which Shimano says can help improve shift speed and quality as well as make wheel changes easier. Add all that up and you get a weight of just 6.99 kilograms or 15.4 pounds, just over the UCI's legal limit. Our fourth bike belongs to the winner of the mountains classification, or in other words, the polka dot jersey, and that was Richard Carapaz. He and the rest of the EF education team are sponsored by Cannondale, and most riders opted to use the Lab 71 Super 6 Evo for both climbing and sprint stages. As the reigning Olympic champ, Carapaz earned himself a one-off gold flake paint job on his 51 centimeter frame set. His Vision Metron SLTL wheels were swapped between a 40 and 60 millimeter rim depth depending on the stage. And either way, got a nice touch of some gold accents to tie the bike together. These were in turn wrapped in a pair of 28 millimeter Vittoria Corsa Pro tires. Moving to the front of the bike, you'll find a 380 millimeter Cannondale times Momo design system one bar. As for the group set, Carapaz runs a 2x12 Shimano Dura Ace Di2 setup with a 54 and 40 tooth FSA chainring up front. Attached to these are a pair of 167.5 millimeter FSA Powerbox K-Force Team Edition cranks. In total, this puts the weight of his Super 6 Evo at 7.38 kilograms or 16.27 pounds. We've made it to the big one. The yellow jersey, the general classification, the fastest rider overall. And this year, of course, that went to Today Pagacha. He and the rest of his UAE Emirates team used the same bike for climbing and sprint stages alike, only swapping out for the time trials. That bike is a 48.5 centimeter, which is really more like a 54 centimeter, Klonago V4RS, which, like the Tarmac S8 we mentioned earlier, balances weight savings in aerodynamics. Most of the part spec on Pagacha's bike is taken care of by Envy, with again some very narrow 360 millimeter SES Pro Team One Piece bar set and Envy SES 4.5 or 2.3 wheels, which will be swapped out depending on the stage. One thing that won't change, however, are Pagacha's massive 30C Continental GP5000 STR tires, which Bike Radar measured at a whopping 33 millimeters wide, fully inflated. Pagacha's V4RS is specced with a 12-speed Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 group set and has a fancy set of sprint shifters that he can use to change gears while on the drops. And that's just the start of the customization. There's a lot of bling on this bike. He's also running a pair of carbonized 54 and 40 tooth chain rings and a direct mount derailleur adapter made by Frames and Gear. As for crank length, Pagacha is once again another rider opting for some shorter 165 millimeter cranks. In total, that puts the weight of his V4RS at 7.27 kilograms or 16.03 pounds. And that's the heaviest of the GC contenders on our list. It's crazy that the 2024 Tour de France has already come and passed, but the good news is that the Paris Olympics start in just a couple weeks, and there's going to be a lot of really cool bikes from a lot of different disciplines to ogle at then. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the 99 Spokes YouTube channel to make sure that you don't miss any of our coverage of the games. And until then, remember that bikes are for everyone. Have fun out there.